From the Evening Standard in London, I'm David Marsland, and this is The Leader. I now call the Secretary of State for Education to make a statement. Secretary of State Williamson. It can't be a great sign for an Education Secretary when, while you're in the Commons announcing your big plan for school exams this year... Mr Speaker, this year's students will receive grades determined by their teachers with assessments covering what they were taught and not what they have missed. The Prime Minister's in a school being asked if he's going to sack you. Do you have full confidence in your Education Secretary? Of course, and I think that what we're doing is uh, the right thing. But that's just where Gavin Williamson is right now. Last year's exams fiasco was a shambles, which he survived. He's trying to get ahead of this year with a pretty radical plan to let schools themselves assess pupils' grades based on teacher recommendations. Exam papers will be available for those schools that choose to make pupils sit them, but they won't be compulsory. The Tory chair of the Cross-Party Education Select Committee, Robert Halfons, called it potentially the Wild West, with fears of an inconsistency across the country. But teachers themselves are mostly giving it at least a cautious welcome, and they're the ones who are going to have to make this work. Jeff Barton is General Secretary of the ASCL Head Teachers Union, and he's with me now. Jeff, after everything schools have been asked to do during this pandemic, now teachers have to assess their own pupils. Is this fair? Well, I think a lot of teachers might well be asking that. But on the other hand, it's difficult to see if you can't have external examinations, quite how you're able to come to an assessment. Because you, it's interesting, you know, to have the front page of a certain national newspaper today raising questions about why teachers would be doing assessment. I mean, it's like asking, why does a doctor do an assessment when you go with your Veruca and stuff? You, you kind of hope your, your doctor is able to do assess. Teachers are experts in assessment. The question, of course, now is, in the absence of external assessment, what does that look like for teachers? So we look at it from a teacher point of view, and already we're getting lots of teachers, getting lots of emails from lots of parents saying, my teenage daughter wants to be a doctor, she needs a grade nine at GCSE, you've got the power to do it, you do it, because everyone else is going to be cheating the system and so on. So part of the responsibility of trade unions, I think, is to protect their members. And one way we do that is by showing that lessons have been learned from last year where the same kind of thing was going on. The difference being, of course, that last year young people had finished their courses, they just hadn't done their revision and sat their exams. Okay, so what lessons have been learned from last year, Jeff? Because last year was basically a disaster. Yeah, I mean, last year was particularly a failure of regulation, wasn't it? So actually, teachers were were able to come up with their assessments, and they did that in the main, very assiduously, and with quite a lot of stress, because they knew it was high stakes. They worried about the consequences for those young people. And that was... That story was never told enough, I I thought. But what then happened is how did you know that a grade B from that teacher in that department in that school was the same as a grade B from that teacher in that department in the other school? Well, that's what the awarding organisations and Ofqual should do. That just imploded. And it meant that you had this huge level of subjectivity. So what's different this year? I do think there's a level of quality assurance we're building in here, which is interesting and hasn't got through in the media today. And it's got a second part of it which you won't find ministers talking about a great deal, but we are as a trade union representing leaders because we think it's in the interest of children and teachers and leaders and public trust. And that is to say there is going to be quality assurance throughout this. So if if a school submits a set of grades which look completely at odds with what they got in 2017, 2018 and 2019, okay, then the amount of quality assurance they are then going to get, including spot checks on what's going on inside the school, will increase. And I just think that what that does with that teacher who's getting emails from parents saying, give my daughter a grade nine GCSE, is for us to be able to say, hang on a minute, this is subject to external quality assurance as well. And that makes things different, I think, from last year. And it also means that when that young person holds their history grade up in the summer, they, they can, I think, more than they did last year, feel that that has been earned um, and that that has got a kind of external credibility. So I think this is really important because I think one of the things that maybe some pupils and potentially employers and universities are worried about is that there might be some schools that maybe pressure their teachers to just nudge up those exam results just a little bit, just make us look a little bit 
better this year. You're saying that can't happen, Jeff. Well, I'm saying it would be, it would have consequences to it. So if 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 those grades come in, the the awarding organisation would say the, these grades don't match what we would have expected. And it's not the same as last year. You're not you're not expected to get the same pr- proportion of grade A's, the same gr- proportion. But broadly speaking, does this look like previous cohorts? Now, if you say and can provide evidence, our cohort has changed. We used to be a single sex school. Now we're mixed ability, and so that explains it, or you know, whatever it might be. Then the awarding organisation could take that into account. But otherwise, what they will do is they will say we're sending this back because we want to see more of your quality assurance and their ultimate sanction. And it'd be interesting to see if they used it is to say, we don't have confidence in giving these grades for this center. And I think that the stigma for a school thinking, you know, blimey, we could have a whole cohort who don't get their A-levels, their GCSEs, their BTEC grades would be significant. So it's a, I think that's quite an interesting example of where Number 10 and the DFE were quite squeamish about that as a concept because it takes you into algorithm land again, potentially, doesn't it? But actually what we think is that what it does is, is, is it allows you to talk about ethical leadership, but it allows you to then demonstrate that and, and it will encourage people to give appropriate grades to young people, I think. And this is what we really need because we need those young people themselves, the ones this year, the ones last year, potentially teenagers next year as well having to go through something similar. We need them to have confidence themselves in their own education as they leave school, as they go on to university, as they start to talk to potential employers about jobs. They have to believe they got the results they deserved. Yeah, I think there's a sense that you want them to feel that they have earned the grade they got this year, that it hasn't been kind of fatalistically determined by something or someone, by a teacher who doesn't like them or a teacher who does like them. And that's why part of the process, again, it hasn't been made clear yet, though it's in the guidance that's come out this afternoon, is that what teachers will do is to have conversations with young people saying, look, I can't tell you what what grade you're going to get because ultimately the awarding organization the, the exam board will do that but i can show you the kinds of evidence that i'm submitting here so that the, the, the kid can see that there will be different bits and pieces chosen there including some which may well have been an external past paper sat in exam conditions in the school if that's what the school decides to do and i'm hoping what that makes young people f- feel is that they are in the hot seat and the interesting thing in the off-call consultation which has had a hundred thousand responses is that 50,000 of those responses, possibly more actually, were from young people themselves. We need to get them having a sense of ownership of this process and explaining the process to them. And that's the leader. Keep up to date with breaking news with the Evening Standards live blog at standard.co.uk. This podcast is back tomorrow at 4pm.